Buying a ticket to the Oscar-nominated film Slumdog Millionaire doesn't quite count as a passage to India. Still, it does open a window into the world of Mumbai, the city we once knew as Bombay. Seth Doan is just back from India, and this morning he has the envelope, please. This is Dharavi. In your right hand side, you can see Asar in front of you. It's Dharavi, it's all Dharavi. Yeah? It's called Dharavi Slum, and it's perhaps the most unlikely of tourist destinations. You can see most of the people who's working in this area, they're living here only. It's known as one of Asia's largest slums. About a million people live here, packed into an area that's less than one square mile. Somewhere around 50% of Mumbai's population lives in a slum like this one. But right now, Dahavi slum is at the center of all the attention. And that's because of this. And the BAFTA goes to Slumdog Millionaire. Slumdog Millionaire. And Slumdog Millionaire. Slumdog Millionaire has already won several coveted film awards and is nominated for 10 Oscars tonight. It's a rags to riches tale of love in which a young boy from these slums in Mumbai, India is given the chance to win a million dollars on a TV show. Jamal Malik, you're absolutely right! I mean, I loved working in Mumbai. Some of the circumstances of the city are materially very, very poor, desperate. But there's an extraordinary resilience and resourcefulness amongst the people who live in the slums. Slumdog Millionaire's best director nominee, Danny Boyle. They were surprised I wanted to shoot in real slums because normally what they would do is they would build a slum if you had to film in a slum. They would build a clean version in the studio. Had you ever been to Dharavi slum before? No, never. No. Never on Dharavi. Even the movie's eight-year-old star, who lives in a middle-class part of Mumbai, was shocked by the poverty in Dharavi. When I got there, there are many people who stay in road near gutters, eight near gutters, all mosquitoes and bees are on their bodies. It was a little bit uncomfortable in starting I was. Located in the middle of Mumbai, India's financial hub, Dharavi is a place that prosperity and seemingly time itself have hardly touched. It once was a swampy marshland that the city's poorest took over, building little shacks in a community here. Initially, government just chose to ignore them. They just let them build the slums. Krishna Pujari works with Reality Tours, a group that offers outsiders the chance to explore the slum. Everybody who thinks slum means like, you know, just, uh, I mean, just poverty or, you know, it's dangerous. So for them, everybody who thinks that, it's very important to come on these kind of tours. They should see what is reality. But that reality is complex. Beneath the tin-clad roofs is a maze of makeshift homes where families struggle to survive, like Mohammedis. There's no such uh, thing that from rags to riches is possible. He, his wife, and his parents all live in one room with just a sheet draped over the string for privacy. Downstairs is their hardware shop. How much does the store make? It's not good. Like what? A daily 200 bucks a day is not sufficient for us to run a family. By bucks, he means 200 Indian rupees. That's less than $5 a day. Unbelievably, two-thirds of India's population scrapes by on less than $2 a day. In Dharavi, clothes are washed in alleyways, teeth are sometimes brushed with twigs, and the stench of sewage lingers. Unless you're repelled by the place and leave, which some people do, they find it too much. It's an assault course on your senses. It's the most extraordinary place. Amid the staggering poverty here, there's opportunity. You know, there is work in Dharavi, any kind of work. There are thousands of low-wage jobs within the slum, from hand embroidery to heavy stonework, to a leather industry that alone employs 40,000 people, but that includes children. These boys came from Bihar, another state here in India. They came and, and make just about $50 a month here making these small leather wallets, but there were no jobs at all where they came from. 
For many of Dadavi's children, school is a luxury they cannot afford. I want to go to school, this boy tells me, but I'm the only one working. My entire family depends on my earnings. These children are among the lucky ones who are in school, and in them lies the hope for a better future. And education is a big thing amongst people there, where they try and improve the lot of their, of their children. There is a positive side, okay? That side we are trying to show you on our tour, okay? Please come. But the promise within Dharavi is often overlooked by the rest of Mumbai. It's possible to live in a skyscraper all your life and never go into a slum, although it may be right below your balcony. Nandini Ramnath is a film critic for the features magazine Mumbai Time Out. She says that for some, the movie's portrayal of poverty struck a nerve. India has embraced the global economy and India wants to be compared with China and India wants to be compared with the best of the West and not be seen as a developing third world country anymore. And when the film opened here, it sparked scattered protests by those objecting to the word dog in the title. It's a reaction that surprised director Danny Boyle. Our use of the word is meant to be like underdog. It's somebody that you can root for. It's actually an affirmative, you know, it's a, it's a positive word in a way, even though it's used in a derogatory way by a policeman during the film. They've shown too much of the poverty side of India. At a trendy cafe here in Mumbai, many told us they liked the movie, but that it's clearly made by an outsider. I mean, I think if an Indian were to make that movie, we would try to kind of hide certain aspects of it, probably. They said to us, you're not going to show that we're poor, are you? They're very concerned about the way that they're portrayed, because they have great dignity, of course. And you have to be honest and say, look, it's going to look poor. I feel bad when the outside people say it's a slum. But, uh, yeah, I feel a little, little bit of bad in my heart. For 23-year-old Nitya, who grew up here, Dharavi is just home. She studies five hours a day, working toward her MBA. Maybe her success, she says, could lessen the stigma of how people see her neighborhood. I say that I'm from Dharavi. They used to, like, they change their face. You're from Dharavi. But somebody, those people who come, they come here and see how we are living, then they were, like, comfortable. If that movie can make more people know about this area and hopefully change, uh, help the people here, then it's a good thing. So. It's easy for Westerners to think that the world's attention will create a Hollywood ending for Dharavi. What might be more realistic is that change will come slowly and from within.